out time for the next R Lab lecture, and we're going to start out by talking about some R built in data structures. These are important data structures uh, that you're going to be encountering repeatedly in any R work. So, the first data structure that we're going to talk about, very important, is the list. A list is a generalized vector in R, in a sense. Remember that vectors, which were the really truly the very first data structure we ever saw when talking about R, um, uh, vectors require that all of the information in a vector be of the same type. And vectors especially are used mostly to contain almost actual data, like numbers, and uh, uh, they, they're often containing uh, numbers, numerics, uh, booleans, character strings, stuff like that. Uh, it almost really truly is data in the sense of a statistician's data. Whereas a list is more a construct to hold, to maybe in a way create more complicated um, data structures and objects and store uh, more, uh, more information in a common place. So a list, unlike a vector, does not require that all of its contents be of the same type. That's one thing. And uh, a, you, you can, in principle, create a vector of vectors, but it's really hard and it's rare. In comparison, lists of lists are actually quite common. Uh, you'll have this uh, descending uh, hierarchy of lists. Uh, and uh, that can be used to create more complicated data structures to store more complicated information. So I start out uh, by creating a list. The function in R for creating a list is the list function. And you pass to the list, um, well, a list of objects that you're going to put in the list. For example, this list, uh, let's, let's go ahead and create it. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, here is L1, if you look at what's in L1. Uh, so we have this, the first item stored in the list. That item is a vector and that item gets printed out. So right now it's printing out a vector that contains a single number. That number is one. This is the next item in the list, item two. The information stored in item two is a character vector, which contains only one element, Fraggle Rock. This is the third item in the list. This item is a vector with three elements. Uh, it is a character vector with elements Henry, Margaret, and Donna. Item four is actually also a list. All of this stuff down here is a list. You can see that I created a list within a list here. Uh, so the first item of the sublist is a vector containing two numbers, one and two. The second item of the sublist is also a vector, a character vector consisting of the words test one, test two, all the way up to test 10. Now, these elements in this list have no names, but we are allowed to name the elements in a list. And we can do so using the names function by assigning a character vector. Actually, it doesn't have to be character. It could be numeric too. Um, although I think that if you assign a numeric vector to a list, it's implicitly converted into a character ve vector. Uh, but uh, we can change the, the names of the items in the list, like so. And uh, now this is what L1 looks like when you print it. And this time, instead of printing one, two, three, four, it prints, it prints dollar $num, because the name of the first element is $num, dollar $car, because the name of the second element is $car, dollar $vec, because the name of the third element in the list is $vec, and dollar inner list because the fourth element in the list is also a list, which it then prints as a sublist. And uh, you, know, you can have an, as many, well, I'm sure not as many, but I'm not really sure what the limit on sublists is, um, if there is one. Um, okay, so that is a named, uh, that, that's, that's a named list. And uh, it's, it's worth mentioning, though, that the elements in a list are still ordered. So there is a first element, a second element, a third element, and a fourth element. And furthermore, if you were referencing the first element and this list had named elements, it would still, uh, 
be returning the you know if if num is the first element in this list so if you are still referencing the first element of the list even if you name the elements you're not going to change anything okay uh we can uh, assign names when we create the list as well so for example uh in this line the first element will be called car that'll be its name and it will contain the vector monday the second element will be called vec and it will contain a vector uh, which is a character ve character character vector consisting of the words and but and or. So uh, let's run this line. Let's look at this list. So there we go. The first element is called car and the second is called vec, although this is still the first element and this is still the second element. Uh, the first element is a character vector with the word Monday and the second element is a character vector with three elements and but and or. Uh, now, all right, so that's creating lists and that's, that's, that's cool, but of but clearly we're going to want to reference the elements in the list as well. How could we do that? Uh, so we could start, well, first off, there's the kind of the distinction between uh, named elements and elements referred to in a positional way. Uh, but uh, let's, uh, we'll get to that in a second. We need to talk about the bracket notation, the square bracket notation. Uh, we could refer to elements in a list like so, like um, L1, 1. That is allowed. Uh, that will give us the first element, so we can kind of refer to elements in the list like we were doing with vectors. You are allowed to do that. So you could do uh, L1, uh, C, true, false, true. This is allowed. But be aware that when you reference elements in a list using square brackets, single square brackets, as opposed to double square brackets. When you're referencing elements in a list using single square brackets, the result will be a list and not what is stored in the list. So L1, one is a list. It's a list with one element, uh, the num element, but it is still a list. So I can like say as dot list uh, l one uh, one. It it says oh uh, no not at, as list uh, is list. Yeah, it says it's a list. Compare that instead to l one double bracket one. That is not a list. That is a vector because when we use the double bracket notation we are referencing the items stored in that position in the list as opposed to creating a sublist in a sense. I, I guess I've used sublist twice now in two different to mean two different things. But um, as opposed to a list that's consisting of sub elements of another list, um, uh, using the double brackets actually references the item stored in that position. So, uh, Pay attention to the difference, L11, that is a list, L1, double bracket one, that is the number stored in that list. And if I were to ask R, uh, is this a list? It says, no, this is not a list. And I am also allowed to reference the elements in the in a list using their names. So for example, I could do L1, um, num, and uh, vec. That's allowed, so I get kind of this uh, I guess I'm calling this a sublist now. Um, I, I get this this different sublist uh, consisting of uh, the num and vec elements, and I can also do l1 double brackets uh, vec, and that will get me the vector stored where in the vec position. That said, um, it almost looks interchangeable except for the fact um, that one gets a list and the other gets the item stored in that list. But here's the thing. I am not allowed to do this. Uh, num vec. That is not allowed. So, uh, neither is uh, one to two. What what is wrong here? The problem is, like I can't like. Com what does this even mean if I'm talking about the item stored in that position? What does it mean to get the item stored in the position one to two? R does not know how to combine items like that. And you would think, well, we could make a list. Is like, well, yeah, we could make a list. And how we would do that is. Uh, we would do that. So you can only reference one item in that list 
using the double bracket notation. It will get you the item stored in that position as opposed to a list containing that ele those elements. Okay, so the distinction is quite important and I hope you're able to appreciate it. Um, um, and for what it's worth, actually, uh, this is also true for vectors. So let's say vec is the numbers one through 10 and we have vec uh, two to three and we can also have vec two. Vec two is a vector, whereas vec double bracket two is supposed to reference the item stored in that element. And also, uh, likewise, this is this at least should be illegal syntax. Yeah, that's illegal syntax. Um, so this is also true for vectors, and it very rarely is an issue, but sometimes it is. So, for instance, it is possible to create vectors of functions. And if you want to reference the function stored in a vector element, as opposed to just a vector, you would need to do, use a double bracket notation. But I think that by that point in time, if you're creating vectors of functions, you probably know what you're doing. All right. Um, if the elements of the list are named instead of referencing them with uh, L1 double bracket quote X, that's actually a lot of um, uh, ASCII characters you're actually allowed to use the dollar sign notation. So there is a shortcut way to reference the elements in named elements and lists. Uh, so for example, let's say I want the vec element, but I want the item stored in the vec position. I want the item there, not a list uh, containing that item. What I could do instead of typing this, L1 double bracket vec, I could type in L1 dollar sign vec. And that saves me some typing. It's actually quite natural. So it's saying, all right, I want uh, like this vec variable in the list. You can almost think of lists as containing, uh, as being containers for other variables, um, which uh, is an interesting discussion that I actually talk about in the 3080 lecture notes. Uh, but uh, we'll, we'll just leave that for now. But that is an alternative way to access named elements. Now, for what it's worth, L1 dollar one, that does not work. Uh, you have to, it has to be a named element in order for that notation to work. So here are some more examples if you're at all curious. Um, but I think I've pretty much made the point. Uh, all right. So, and, it, and it's worth paying attention to this because there are often more complicated R data structures. For example, um, here's a linear model. Fit is going to be the result of LM, uh, uh, sepal dot, I think, uh, sepal dot length, uh, model by species, uh, data equals iris. So this, it doesn't look like it's a list. In fact, it doesn't look like anything we've seen before, but actually, is this a list? Yes, it is. This is a list and this list has names. So oh, by the way, you can get the names of the elements in a list like you could with vectors. You're still able to do that. So like the names of L1, there they are. There they are right here. Uh, so you're still allowed to do that. So what are the names of fit? Because supposedly fit is a list. Oh, look at that. It does have names. It has values. So I can go fit dollar model and get something cool or fit dollar uh, coefficients and get something cool. So yeah, um, be aware of that. Quite often, lists are showing up all over the place, actually. Lists are everywhere. So they are an extremely common data structure. Uh, maybe arguably the most common data structure, uh, maybe behind vectors. Like vectors are common and are the most common and lists might be the second most common. Uh, I actually think that is, in fact, true. But uh, be aware of that. Be aware of that. Uh, Lists are everywhere, so getting comfortable with lists is is a, a good thing. All right, next up are matrices. An R matrix is much like an R vector. In fact, internally, matrices and vectors are the same thing. It's just that matrices additionally have an attribute for dimension. In fact, here's a here's kind of a weird way. So here's a here's a weird way to make a matrix. Uh, people rarely do this. So we'll say dim vec. So the dimensions of this vector are null. It doesn't have any dimensions. But if I set this to two, three, I now have a matrix. Hmm. But that's because uh, vectors and matrices are actually internally the same thing. 
but that that's uh that like no one ever actually makes a matrices this way or at least i don't think they do uh basically a matrix is like a matrix you've encountered in mathematics except it's not necessarily containing numeric data uh, they are two-dimensional data structures uh, like vectors they must contain the same type of data but unlike vectors they have a row dimension and a column dimension um so there's a few ways to make matrices in R. I should probably mention this one first. There is a matrix function that will take a, a single vector as an input and turn that vector into a matrix. So we could t say matrix vec, and we give uh, we can give either the n row parameter or the n call parameter. You only need to set one of them. You could set both of them, but um, uh, it's possible that if you set both of them and they don't result in all of the elements in the vector being used, like for example, you have six elements, but you choose three rows and three columns, uh, that would that would be a problem. But uh, generally, you only need to set one of these because if you know how many columns there are, then it, R will automatically know how many rows there are. It'll just divide the number of elements by the number of columns you selected, and that's the number of rows. So... Uh, we can set, let's say, the columns, the number of columns that we want to three, and we get the same thing as we got before. So that's making a matrix directly from a vector. Uh, if we want to change how exactly it's being done, so you'll notice that it's uh, filling up columns first. So it will fill up the first column with elements from the vector. Um, it'll fill up the first column, then the second column, then the third column. So it's filling up by columns. If you don't like that behavior, you can change the parameter by row to true and now it fills up the first row before it fills up the second row with elements from the vector now this is one way to make matrices but um i actually not that big of a fan of this method uh I, I would rather avoid it if i could because there are a couple r functions called r bind and c bind that um kind of make matrices the way you think about them in your head where you could say um, I want a matrix where the first column is one, three, five, and the second, uh, column is one, one, two. So what I would do is I would use the C bind function. The first vector I give it will be the first column. So this will be the column with the numbers one, three, and five. And the second vector that I give it will be the second column. So one, one, two. And it, it's a bit more intuitive in its results. So you don't have to think really hard about what's being filled up first, the rows or the columns, stuff like that. You don't have to worry about that when you're using the C bind function, which C bind itself means column bind. So you're taking vectors and binding them together as columns. Uh, compare that to the row bind function, which is doing a very similar thing, except instead of creating columns, it's creating rows. So this R bind matrix is the transpose of the C bind matrix. Okay, so those are the two uh, common methods for uh, creating matrices. Matrices are, um, well, let's, uh, before I move on, let's create a couple matrices that I have in the notes. These are character matrices. So um, these uh, matrices um, are, are consisting of character data. If we want to know the dimensions of a matrix, which is the number of rows and number of columns, well, you can use the dim function, which will list out the dimensions of a matrix. So the mat1 matrix is a matrix with four rows and three columns. Uh, so it lists rows first and columns second. Uh, we can ask for the number of rows of a matrix directly using the nrow function. We can ask for the number of columns directly with the nCall function. Uh, and uh, the length function, when applied to a matrix, will tell you how many elements are in the matrix, which should be the product of the number of rows and the number of columns because matrices are these rectangular uh, data structures. Um, you can also use the matrix function uh, like so. Uh, here are the two matrices that I created. Uh, all right, so um, it is possible, maybe you remember with vectors that you can name the elements of the vector. You can name the uh, rows and columns of a matrix too. And what you use are the row names function and the call names functions. So those should be self-explanatory. Row names gives names to the rows and call names gives names to the columns. So this is the resulting matrix.
Uh, internally, though, matrices are actually vectors. Uh, now, accessing the elements of a matrix, just like anything, it's uh, nice that we can create these things, but we need to be able to access the data they store in order to be able to do anything useful. Um, you could access the elements of a matrix like, like so, uh, where using basically the vector notation. Oops, uh, not 21. Uh, using that vector notation, you are still allowed to do that. It's just, I wouldn't recommend it because, I mean, unless you really know what you're doing, because sometimes this is necessary. Like, I think I once wanted to select elements from a matrix in a checkerboard pattern, and you had to access the elements using uh, this square brackets notation as if it were a vector, which was really weird. Uh, but let's let's just leave it at that. Um, you are allowed to do that. Um, that said, that's probably not what you want. Probably what you want is to access the elements in a matrix uh, in via the rows and the columns rather than whatever internal representation uh, this whatever that this notation is using. So, in fact, you are allowed to use the notation uh, square brackets with a comma in between. Uh, and where so for example, let's take mat th uh, let's uh, let's see. Uh, okay, uh, mat 2, which uh, consists of some uh, uh, Utah schools. or do I want mat 1? Do I even really care? Uh, hmm. I don't know. Do I care? Okay, Matt two, Matt two, it is. Uh, <laughs> all right. So uh, I want the item in the second row and the third column. That should be BYU. Oh wait, I don't want BYU. I want the first row and the third column. That's University of Utah. That's much better. Oh, wait. Oh, oops. Didn't name that quite right. Uh, Matt 2. I want a Matt 2. Ah, I want a Matt 2. There we go. All right. Um, yeah, you are allowed to do that. You are allowed to access the elements uh, via square brackets and uh, using a comma to separate the dimensions. And in fact, you're allowed to use any any indexing method you prefer for each dimension. So if I want rows one through two, I could create a vector with the elements one and two, and uh, I'm still referencing the third column. And maybe you noticed that what resulted was a vector, like this still makes sense. This is still the first and the second elements of the uh, third column. So the first and second rows, it's just, this, is, this has lost that dimension attribute. Right, this is now a vector, kind of like any other vector we've created before. Which most of the time is okay, but if you don't want that, if you don't want the result to basically lose its matrix attributes, you can use the parameter drop equals false. And now it's still behaving as if it were a matrix. It doesn't have the same dimensions as it did before, but that's to be expected. So, and... Um, uh, you can use whatever you want. So, for example, uh, I could do true, false, true to select elements in the second dimension. What I end up with is a, uh, let's see, true, false, true. How many columns does this thing have? Oh, right, right, right. This has four columns. Hold on. Uh, so, dim, mat, two. Okay, four columns. So that's the reason why I was a little surprised. Uh, we need to put one more false here. All right, there we go. That's that's what I was expecting. Uh, it did that recycling business that I talked about in one of my previous videos. So it made the the last element true because it needed to recycle. Anyway, um, you're you're you can use whatever you want if your if your dimensions are named. Like for example, Matt three has named dimensions. If we want, we can access the elements in the dimensions by name like so uh we could do uh we'll access the odds row and for um and for the uh the uh, columns i'm going to select the second and the fifth columns 
Uh, wait, wait, wait. Oh, this is Matt 2. I want Matt 3. Sorry. Uh, so, Matt 3. Okay, there we go. Uh, this appears to have kept its matrix dimensions. If I were to ask what the dimensions of this thing are, yeah, it still has dimensions. Whereas if we uh, went back up to this scenario and I ask what the dimensions are, uh, yeah, it doesn't have any dimensions, just like regular R vectors. Uh, huh. Well, that surprises me. I guess you learn something new every day. Uh, but yeah, I guess that's a thing. So, <laughs> um, yeah, you can do whatever you want. Let's suppose, though, that, like, uh, you don't really want, like, you want the third column and everything in the third column. You don't, so let's see, uh, let's, let's look at Matt 2 again. Uh, you don't want to have to write out uh, 1 to 3. Oops. Oh, right, right, right. That's correct. Um, so you want the third column of uh, Matt 2. And here I got everything that's in the third column. But I'm a little annoyed that I had to write out 1 colon 3 in order to get everything in that column. Uh, what could I do instead to get the third column and so all the rows in the third column? Well, just leave that part blank. And it will work. So if I want the second row and all the columns of the second row, I can just set uh, the first parameter corresponding to whatever row selection method I'm using and just leave the other one blank. And I'm still allowed to, for example, say rows one through two. I can still do that and we'll select all the columns. So basically, if you leave one of those fields blank in a matrix, uh, the result will be that it... Uh, we'll select all the columns or all the rows corresponding to whichever one you omitted. Okay. Um, and here's some more uh, R code, kind of demonstrating what I was uh, showing along the side. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can inspect this to see how exactly this works. Uh, there's a generalization of both vectors and matrices in R, which are known as arrays. So uh, there's one array that people actually are using a lot. It's a data set called Titanic. And the Titanic data set contains information on survivorship of the Titanic, who survived, or how many people, uh, depending on class, uh, their sex, their age, uh, survived or didn't survive uh, the Titanic disaster. And this is actually an array. So if I were, and the way easiest way to say that, see that is to type in, uh, dim Titanic, this has four dimensions. So it has the first dimension, which is like rows, but it's getting a little weird. Has a four, it has four quote unquote rows, two quote unquote columns, and two quote unquote slabs, and two quote unquote hypercubes. I don't know. But this is a four dimensional array in R. So arrays are a thing. Uh, you can have any number of dimensions. There is no limit on dimensions. And in fact, it's not that hard to create an array. But I'm not going to talk any more about arrays. Uh, they're more complicated. Uh, you actually can reference elements in arrays. Like for Titanic, uh, th this comma notation still works. So for example, I could get all, let's see, first class, or no, let's, let's, let's do crew. Uh, so crew, I think that's the first dimension. Then the next is sex, so we'll go uh, female. I think that's the next one. And then age is child, and survived is no. So there are no little girls who died oh, who died on the Titanic. So that's comforting. Uh, although it was like like over a hundred years ago. They're now very much old women. Anyway, <laughs> um, uh, if they're still around. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, I need to stop. Uh, uh, next uh, data structure, data frames. Uh, and our data frame, uh, this is the reason why I, I'm talking about data frames after lists and matrices for a reason. Because a data frame stores data in a tabular format. And technically a data frame is a list. Uh, there, and you reference the element of data, you reference the columns of data frames like you reference uh, the variables and lists. 
So one data frame that we've got is the, uh, that's, that's really long, uh, is the iris data frame. And uh, let's look at the structure of iris. Actually, let's look at some of the at the structure of some of the other things we've been creating. So, for example, the structure of uh, mat three. That's a matrix. This is what a matrix looks like. Uh, the structure of Titanic looks like so. Uh, so these are these are all quite important things. I, I hope you're paying attention to what structure is doing. Structure is a very useful function for learning about a data set without spitting out the whole thing on your screen, which students are want to do and then I compile into a PDF and I get this PDF with 120 pages of a data set anyway um, um, uh, let's see another one was a l1 yeah that was a list so this is what a list looks like when you type it into stir uh, here is iris which is one of the built-in data frames uh, 150 observations of five variables and it looks actually a lot like the list. And that you have this uh, dollar stuff, and it actually doesn't look that much like Titanic or Mat Three, because uh, uh, Mat Three, ha like it, it looks like it has names, but it's actually referring to them quite differently than how either the list or the data frame are referencing the named their named elements. Uh, it's viewing the names as attributes of of what's of some uh, attribute known as the dim names. So. Um, so matrices are actually handling names rather differently. Uh, let's see. Uh, for that matter, what is the uh, um, what does stir say when I do uh, Titanic, and we'll say one 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 and leave the last field blank because that should be a vector. Yeah, that's that's a vector, and it recognizes it as a vector and still the names are an attribute which is uh, it's kind of this i'm not going to talk about attributes right now um uh but it's just something that objects have and are their attributes um but yeah it, the these so lists and data frames internally actually look extremely similar so technically, in fact, technically, a data frame is a list. You can think of data frames as being lists, and you can treat them as lists. It's just that a data frame has an additional restriction on top of lists, which is that it consists of vectors, and those vectors are of the same length. So when you assume that you have vectors as your data, and those vectors are of the same length, then you are then you have basically a two-dimensional structure. And since data frames therefore have a two-dimensional structure, they also can be viewed and treated as matrices, even though they are not matrices. Um, so you actually, in addition to have, uh oh, Oops, sorry about that. I uh, pressed the wrong hotkeys, and uh, uh, that was bad. So where was I? Um, where was I? I had to restart the recording session because I couldn't be sure that I just lost my audio or something. So I just restarted recording. Uh, what was I saying? Uh, I was talking about data frames, and I was saying that you can refer to the elements in data frames either as if the data frames are uh lists or as uh matrices so you are allowed to let's take the iris data frame you are allowed to reference them like uh, like as if they're data frames uh, no as if they're matrices so here's the uh the element in the first row in the third column that is still allowed but you can also reference the columns of matrices as if they as if matrices were lists so for example the uh sepal length column i can access it as if the the data frame were a list so that gets me basically the sepal length variable of this data set and you know, in an alternative way to get this would be uh, maybe with the double bracket notation sepal dot length 
Or another way we could do it is using viewing it as a list uh, sepal length. That's another way to get the sepal length column. In which case, it keeps its data frame like structure. Um, because when you don't use the double brackets and you use the single brackets, it will keep its structure. Um, so, it, so like lists stay lists when you use single brackets. Uh, data frames stay data frames when you use single brackets. Um, and notice here that I did not reference rows at all because I'm treating this as a data frame. But if I wanted to, uh, I could do, for example, I want rows one through three. That's allowed. Uh, but it also didn't keep its data frame structure anymore. So if I want to keep the data frame structure, I'd say drop equals false. And now it stays a data frame. Uh, so, uh, yes. So you are allowed all of those ways to get the information in data frames and all of the referencing rules that we talked about in the previous lecture videos and up until now, the, all of that stuff still applies. So all that vector subsetting and stuff to the point that I don't even really feel the need to mention it again. Uh, to create a data frame, we have a few options. We could use the data frame function to cr di directly create a data frame. So here's one example where I create a data frame DF1. Uh, and here's what the data frame looks like. Notice that, no, notice that in the creation of this data frame, I uh, refer to the elements of the data frame by name. The quotes for like these variable names or parameter names, if you prefer, I'll even go up. Those quotes are not actually necessary. So if you wish to omit them, you can. I'm not even really sure why I put them in there anymore. At this point, I think it's more just force of habit on my part for, oops, oopsies, typo. Um, I think it's more force of habit on my part to put the quotes and the names. Um, uh, so, but you're allowed to create data frames like that. We can look at the structure of this data frame. Uh, if you want to name the, uh, let's, uh, go back to the matrix two, mat two. Um, so mat two, uh, is a matrix. And, uh, if you, another way you can create data frames is you can create them from matrices, uh, or, or matrix like objects using the as.data.frame function. So we could use as.data.frame mat two and the result is a data frame. Um, and you could even have done this even if we hadn't named the columns of mat two, it's just better to do that. By the way, the function call names uh, for data frames, so let's say DF1, that still works. It's equivalent to names DF1 basically because Matrices can also be viewed. Uh, matrices, can, matrices can be viewed as either lists or or matrices or. I think I'm getting my words confused. Data frames can be viewed as either matrices or lists, and you can use kind of the functions for both of those. Now that said, if you want to use set the row names of this, since lists don't have a conception of row names, you need to use the row names function. So row names df1. Uh, in this case, the row names are just the numbers one, two, three, four, five, which for what it's worth, let's take a matrix, mat two. Mat two is still a matrix. If we ask for the row names of mat two, it gives us null because no row names were ever set. So data frames automatically get row names assigned, which are often going to be just numbers from one to the number of rows. Mm -hmm. uh, matrices don't get that. So data frames get row names automatically, matrices don't. Um, all right, so uh, continuing on. So here's DF2, uh, ST. So there's a structure of DF2. Uh, we end up with variables, elementary, high school, university, and local. Uh, uh, you can co co uh, coerce lists into data frames as well, since uh, uh, lists are, since um, data frames are lists. So this is a list where we do in fact have um, vectors of equal length as the elements of the list so it's it can in fact be coerced into a data frame all right so that's an introduction to all of this data frames um uh in terms of their structure are essentially a combination of uh, matrices and lists but the next section we'll talk about uh we'll talk more about working with data frames so um
All right, so that's it, and I will see you in a future lecture.